Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Hi, I'm Casey Durango of Go Keto with Casey, where I talk about how I lost 97.4 pounds after starting the ketogenic protocol, how you may be able to lose weight, improve your health, and regain control of your life, like I did. Hope you're well. We are well. Thank you for allowing me to be part of your Saturday morning, if indeed you are viewing this live, uh, Saturday morning, Eastern time. Today's topic, as the title explained, is Keto and Me, My Experience, and this happens to be about exercise. Now, let me explain to you how the ketogenic protocol, as I learned it, and as I have practiced it now for over nine years, keep your carbohydrate intake to 20 grams or fewer a day, total carbs, not net carbs. Net carbs just means more carbs. If it's not on page four, link below. Don't eat it, but you don't even need a food list. Fatty sources of protein, limited amounts of non-starchy vegetables if you want to eat them. Limited amounts of leafy greens if you want to eat them. Limited amounts of full-fat dairy if you like it and you can tolerate it. Don't eat if you're not hungry. That's the hardest part. Stop eating when you're satiated, not when you're about to pop. Be patient and persevere. I added the last two myself. That's it. And what happens when you reduce your carbohydrate intake sufficiently, our liver stops pumping out glucose for fuel and happily our body turns to looking for ketone bodies, fat for fuel. We start burning fat for fuel. If we don't overeat calories and we don't have a bunch of added dietary fat, it'll our bodies will burn our body fat, our stored body fat for fuel. It's fantastic. And our appetite is suppressed. We eat less. We are feel healthier. Inflammation subsides. All the good things. You know what's not under the protocol as I learned it and as I practiced it? Exercise. There's nothing about consuming X number of ounces of water per day. There's nothing about time of day eating. There's nothing about grams of protein or grams of fat. And there's nothing about exercise. Now, that having been said, just as I'm not anti-veg, I like vegetables. I just don't eat many of them, if any. I'll go for days without eating vegetables because I require less fuel. I eat less fuel. I'm always going to default to fatty sources of protein first. Uh, and I, I'm not anti-veg. I'm also not anti-exercise. But seriously, and, and I tried, I did the move more, eat less, low fat, do that. I had the summer of the triathlons. If you go to my blog, link below, you can see photographs. Some of those were taken, some of those photographs were taken during the summer of the triathlon. And there I am in all my rotund glory, moving more and eating less. To tell a morbidly obese person or or merely an overweight person to just get in, you know, pound out some exercises is not only ineffective, it's punitive and it can be damaging to our joints. I am very fortunate that my ankles, knees, hips are, did not suffer greatly after all those years. I was morbidly obese, obese and morbidly obese for 30 years. And I did try to exercise. I'm lucky I didn't damage anything permanently. So what about exercise? Where does exercise come in? Exercise, aerobic exercise particularly, is ineffective for fat loss. As the saying goes, you can't outrun poor nutrition. And poor nutrition is basing your diet on carbs. And I don't care whether they're complex carbs, simple carbs, supposedly good carbs. Carbs are not essential to human functioning. It's not an essential macronutrient, meaning we don't have to consume carbohydrate to get the residuals that we would get from consuming carbohydrate, namely glucose. We're swimming in glucose, many of us. We don't need to be swimming. If we don't consume carbohydrate, our bodies will, com will 
create the glucose required through gluconeogenesis. Our livers and our kidneys do this, and it's great. It's demand-driven. But if we are, if we are just overweight, it, it's just very difficult to burn that off without reducing caloric intake, you know, a lot, which means if you're burning sugar for fuel, glucose, and you're asking your body to do a whole lot more, you're going to be hungry all the time, all the time, all the time. When you're burning fat for fuel, for one thing, it's a very efficient fuel. There are nine kcals of calories of energy in every gram of fat, whether that's body fat or beef fat. There are four calories of energy in every gram of carbohydrate or protein. So burning fat for fuel can make, there are many endurance athletes now that are follow the protocol. Chris Frome, who won the Tour de France six times or something like some crazy number of times. He's keto. There are endurance marathoners who are not, they're doing the opposite of carb loading. So anyway, what about exercise? I've returned to exercise. When I lost the bulk of my weight, and it was bulk, I wasn't doing any exercise. I was moving more than I had been because I could. I could easily move, you know, navigate my way through my world without fear of my stomach or my bottom bumping into things and not, I was not about to go into a fine china shop. I would have been like a bull in a china shop, except I was very, you know, five foot one inch bull with no horns. Just knocking into things. So I moved more. And then some of you who, who are familiar with my story will know that it, at about, a, I don't know how much weight loss, maybe about 50 pound weight loss, I don't recall. I decided, you know what? I did those triathlons 50 pounds ago. I bet I could do them now. And it would be so much easier than hauling my derriere on a bicycle up that infernal hill on High Cone Road. Oh, that was such a hard hill. I cried. I literally cried the first time I tried to get up it. And I had to get off my bike and walk it, walk it up. Anywho, so I, this was back in, this was back before the, the Apple Watch was just hitting the market, I think. But you couldn't get it wet. And I was going to do triathlons, right? Swim, bike, run. So I got a Garmin 920 XT. It was a ridiculous extravagance for me to get. And I love it still. But it eventually became the world's most expensive step counter. But I, you know, some of you have seen it. You might note I'm wearing something different. Another ridiculous extravagance. I got the Apple Watch 8. I love it. Not sponsored. I, if, if only, I highly recommend. Anyway, exercise. So why am I doing exercise now? I, I kind of returned to exercise. I joined a wonderful um wellness center associated with my alma mater, the nicest gym facility I've ever seen. And I joined them all over the course of time. And I did that and I was doing, I had a routine. And you know how we talk about carb creep? I experienced, hmm, what would you, inertia creep. One of the laws of physics is a, a body in motion tends to remain in motion. A body at rest tends to remain at rest. I became a body at rest. And so I got out of the routine. I, let, uh, you know, I didn't renew my membership. Then after time, I said, I've got to do something because I'm, I'm feeling I want to be fit. Not about losing body fat or losing weight. It's about being fit. Pulled the total gym out of the closet. And I had a great routine on the total gym. And I did that for about 18 months or so, maybe two years, I don't remember, inertia creep, inertia creep. And I decided, no. And now I feel, I, my weight is stable, but I feel thicker and I feel flabbier. You know, at one point I had actual guns and they're not bad now, but they're flabbier than they were. I want them to be like this again, not like that. That's not about you know, pounding out, uh, or it's not about burning fat will take care of that. I mean, I want to continue burning fat for fuel, but I also want to build my lean mass, my skeletal muscle mass, 
lean tissue muscle is more bioactive than fat. Fat cells on our body are not inert, but it doesn't require a lot of energy to maintain them. It requires more energy to man maintain muscles. So I want to build the muscles. So long story short, I've renewed my membership. I got this fantastic watch, which how did I ever live without it? I don't know. I still have my Garmin 920 XT, which has great sentimental value to me. Maybe I'll auction it off. It's a you know relic. It, exercise. If someone's telling you, you must move more, eat less, move more if you want to. And it doesn't take extreme things. Walk. When I was training for the triathlons in one of the training groups, there was, it was a women's only group. And most of the people who were training, this is for a sprint level triathlon, were beginners. But there was a woman there who just, she just ran. She loved running. She was a petite little thing. And I said, wow, this is, you know, gosh, it's, you're such a great runner. You're so fast. She said, well, I, I said, I'll never be able to do what you did, what, what you do. She said, well, yes, you could. We were probably close to the same age. She said, I only started this about four years ago. She said, and I was overweight and and not, I, I was a couch potato. Come on, I said. She said, no. One day I couldn't stand myself anymore. So she said, I'm going to go for a walk. So she walked. And then after a few days of that, she said, I, you know, I'm going to try to jog. She broke it down into, I'm going to jog to the next telephone pole. And then I'm going to stop and keep walking then. And then she did that. She said, okay, now I'm going to alternate telephone poles. Jog, walk, jog, walk. Then she started making it to the corner. Then it, she became a, a marathoner. It really is step by step, moment by moment. If the best thing you can do right now, and this is about fitness and core strength and standing erect and having our body's framework service as well as possible. The best thing you can do is grab a, a you know, a, a liter bottle of water or diet tonic water, by the way, hashtag Casey's pink drink, glass full, tall glass full of ice, diet tonic water up to about here, diet cranberry juice up to about here, and a squeeze of lime. I get asked every time. Get, a, you know, do this. That weighs about a pound. It's about a pound. And so then maybe you get a, you know, do this. It, it doesn't matter if it's a pound. If you do this 100 times, you're going to work some muscles. The best thing you can do are the the uh, band, the, the elastic band things. that They're dirt cheap. And you pull some resistance. Do a modified push-up standing against a wall, <laughs> leaning against a wall or against a counter or the back of a chair. But if there's something that motivates you, join a, join a, a challenge. You know, there are groups on Garmin, My Fitness Pal, Apple. You can see each other's stuff. you got to cha challenge each other um, if you want to do that. If you want to do it solo, do it solo. You don't have to exercise to burn body fat. It's ineffective. But you will, you can feel better. For some people, workouts are like mental therapy. Right? For me, the facility has a wonderful sauna. And the last thing I do, the days when I can do it, is I sit in that sauna, still as I can be, and I kind of meditate. That's not really burning anything. It's not building anything. It's just a good motivation for me. If I want to sit in that sauna that I really like, I need to get my rear in the car and go to the gym. You know it. I know it. Sometimes the hardest part is getting in the car. Testify, right? Get in the car. So don't worry if you're not an athlete. I'm an anti-athlete. I'm not anti. I'm not against athletes. I'm the antithesis of an athlete. I like to swim. I haven't gotten back in the pool yet, and that's a whole other conversation I talked about with patrons yesterday. I'm not a very good swimmer. I'm slow, but I like it. Again, it's like it's like yoga because it enforces rhythmic and conscientious breathing. And if you're overweight, water aerobics, walking in a pool, it is so much easier on your joints and it gets you moving and it gets you socializing. Thank you, darling. 
my just computer just told me that it's one uh, nine fifteen. So, exercise to the extent you can. Find a way that it's a motivation. Another thing I like to do is on my way home from the gym, I go shower and put on my street clothes. I stop at a really nice coffee shop and I take out my computer and I work on my writing project and do some other things and I treat myself to a tall coffee. I take my own container so as, you know, less environmental impact, hopefully. So whatever gets you going. Resistance training. I highly recommend the Total Gym, by the way. I just needed to push it up to another level. I, I, I just wanted to. And I like the facility. Do what you can do. Remember, to burn body fat, you reduce your carbohydrate intake. If you increase your, you know, your exercise, you don't have to increase carbs. That is a myth. Myth. Research professor Timothy Noakes, N-O-A-K-E-S from South Africa, he coined the phrase carb loading. He was a marathoner and he wrote a book, The Lore, L-O-R-E, of Running, an entire chapter on carb loading. Subsequently, after he became a type 2 diabetic, somewhat in his 50s, He's a marathoner. Someone recommended the uh, New Atkins for a New You, co-authored by my friend Eric Westman, Stephen Finney, Jeff Folick. He read it in a night. Tim Noakes did. And subsequent documentaries, he, is a, he takes this the book he wrote and ripped out that chapter. And he said, I apologize. Mea culpa. I was wrong. I believed the line that was you know, promulgated. So anyway, nutrition burns body fat. Exercise, whether it's cycling, swimming, yoga, resistance training, modified system, silver sneakers, if you have access to that, builds muscle and helps with bone density, we hope. And feeling good and feeling strong and being the fittest, strongest people we can. I don't care whether you're 20 right now or 90 right now. We want to be as fit and as self-reliant and as capable and as healthy as we can for as long as we have. Lecture over. Right now, I want to, and um, by the way, you don't have to buy anything to be 100% successful at this. I, don't, I didn't need to buy an Apple Watch to be successful at exercise but I did and I like it. You don't have to buy one thing. There, are, There is no food product that says keto on it. No, that's not. If it is, it's not. Don't. Just lay off the carbs. I will happily, though, sell you uh, T-shirts. This one's, this is a tank top. It's just, it's just GKWC. Go keto with Casey. It's kind of subtle. Uh, the spring to my link to my spread shop, which is below in some of the items you can see caps and mugs and water bottles and teddy bears and sweatshirts, etc. I've got a couple of these left. Just sent some out yesterday. A couple of these calendars left. You can see them at my blog, link below. This record journal, you can get it at Amazon. You can see it at my blog. It'll take you to Amazon and it's full of stuff. And I want to say thank you. I'm just trying to earn my keep, guys. I want to say thank you to patrons who I know are here. Um, it's, I have a private support group on patreon.com, link below. And for starting $5 a month, you get 20 pre-recorded videos from me sitting at my kitchen counter first thing in the morning. Most of the topics suggested by, suggested by patrons going up from there, a handful of patron only live streams on Crowdcast. I actually have one of those today at 10 o'clock, uh, going up from there, a handful of patron only video group sessions. On Zoom and up from there, one-on-ones with me a month. And if 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 joining Patreon or buying a cap is not your thing, if you can give, if they, if you find this, these videos helpful, if you can give a thumbs up, it actually does help my channel. So thank you so much for that. I appreciate it. Now, let me turn my comments. No, turn my attention to comments and questions. And I just jump in in the middle. Huh. Karazi, Kathy, what I did to find something else for my hands to do, I crocheted sketched color. Someone must have been saying, you know, I can't 
Okay, D. Kaiser, munchies, meat, sliced pepperoni, cooked, 400 degrees, five minutes. Um, good morning from Virginia. Okay, D. Kaiser writes, another good munchie, Casey's cheese crust pizza. You know, and I have one, my husband makes cheese crackers out of deluxe American cheese. I have, I think I have a video on that. It's like 45 seconds in the microwave. And they are, you let them cool and they're super crunchy and they taste like goldfish. Love sauna and aqua aerobics. Joyce Holstein writes, Heidi Watts, good morning from Wisconsin. Nadja Newhall, good morning. Oh, excuse me, good morning, everyone. Hector, 6766. Try pork rinds. If not for munchie, crunch them for a meatloaf binder. I use that. I make the best meatloaf. And I never brag about my cooking, but this meatloaf recipe is perfection. And I do, I, you know, mash up a bunch of pork rinds and that is the binder. So instead of my mother used to take white bread and use it in there. Absolutely right. <laughs> to fix MJ, I got the stronger than a cookie shirt for Christmas. I love the blue color and the fit. Thank you so much. I'm so glad that you like it. Jen Ikes writes, good morning, Casey and all Kathy Carney. Excuse me, Ser Kath Kelly Sierney. Good morning. Love using and eating pork rinds. Absolutely. Do keep in mind, though, there is no nutrition in pork rinds. And a serving is not a bag. So you, they're not unlimited, particularly if every time you eat when you're dipping it in something. Um, so does anyone have any questions for me? I, you can ask me anything and I will, I will respond to anything. I won't tell you how much I weigh. That is a real weird trigger for me. It's a throwback. You know, I'll tell you how tall I am and how much the scale fluctuated. I, every morning on my snippets, I, I say, and in the scale, and it'll either be up or down. Sometimes it's a pound. Sometimes it's two tenths of a pound one way or the other. But I won't tell you how much I weigh. For one thing, I don't want anyone to think that they, if they are a you know female my age, my height should weigh what I weigh. Judy Tucker, seventy year, seventy years young, lost one hundred fifty pounds off over, off over ten medications thanks to keto, and Casey, and now exercise with Casey. Of course, Judy's a farmer. She'd been exercising the whole time. And I say it every time. I don't know how, Judy, how you were managing a farm 150 pounds ago. That's work. I, I'll say it again. If I haul 25 pounds, which is about my limit, of chicken feed up the yard for the chickens, I feel like, man, I'm, I'm working. And then I think, wow, I used to weigh like four of these. How did I, how did I function? I don't know. Hey, Maury Glisson. Good morning from Greenville, North Carolina. Thank you. Good morning, Kathy Russell. I asked about munchies to help when stressed so I don't pick up bad choices. Yes, indeed. Now, do we really think that eating anything, including pork rinds or pepperoni slices or M&Ms, is going to fix stress? See, this would be my recommendation to you, is stop associating eating with stress or stress with eating. Try to break that. Yeah, whatever the stressor is, try to deal with that thing. You know, it's a leaking water heater or thankless children or a cruddy boss. Try to separate those two. Um, I don't think it's on this year's calendar, but one year I, you know, I put employ the blast method which was a cooperative effort on patrons talking about things, the blast method before making a decision to eat. You know how 12-step programs have halt, don't drink if you're hungry, angry, lonely, or tired. This one is don't make a decision about eating food if you're bored, lonely, angry, stressed, or tired. Blast. Those things make you vulnerable. Boredom, loneliness, anger, stress, and being tired. You're vulnerable to poor decision-making. Only make a decision about eating if you're what? Hungry. 
Uh, not Janu Hall. No question, just a, a huge admiration that you never went off track. No. Now, I did have inertia creep, and there have been times when I've eaten food when I'm not hungry. That is and remains my greatest challenge. So I just work at it. John Gahegan. I hope I pronounced that correctly. Hi, Casey. I watch you every Saturday, usually on replay, and have never commented. I just wanted to say that I enjoy your simple approach to the keto way of eating. You make so much sense to me. Well, thank you. You know what? It made sense to me when I, I was, I had given up on losing weight. You might know. I didn't want to take insulin for type 2 diabetes. I've, over the course of, oh, what, tw 20, 20 years, I was diagnosed and treated for cancer three times. I could kind of say, okay, cancer is going to get me. But I didn't want to take insulin for type 2 diabetes. Googled how to not take insulin for type 2 diabetes. Came across the white coat video of my friend, Dr. Eric Westman. He wasn't my friend then. He's my friend now. And it was a simple, as I've said to, in front of him when I've been talking and we've been at the same place, I don't know whether it was his boyish good looks or a simple calm delivery, but it made sense to me. Keep your carbs 20 grams or fewer. It's not on page four. Don't eat it. Don't eat it if you're not hungry. So it made sense to me. So I started doing it the very next time I put food in my mouth. I didn't have to buy anything. I didn't, it's no special foods. It's people say, what do you eat? Everything you eat just without the carbs. Judy Tucker, I feel I lost my evil twin that ate carbs I like that. Patricia Newbert. Hey, stress eating. I put in my Evisalign retainers. Ah, good one. Trish, uh, Trisha Newberg, Judy, don't feed your evil twin. Yes, that's a good way to put it. Let me see. Is there anything? Oh, the Durham support group meetings that have been in person over the last few months are have we gone back to virtual. So if my calendar blog, 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 blog. You can see my schedule in my blog. Or if you follow me on Crowdcast, it's Crowdcast slash Go Keto with Casey, you'll be notified every time I schedule a public uh, Crowdcast event. And so this will be with Dr. Eric Westman and me on Crowdcast. It's a very nice platform. You can go in early and enter a bunch of questions under the Q&A thing and they'll be retained. So that's the first Tuesday of every month. So February, I think that's the 6th. 6.30 p.m. Eastern to about 8 o'clock. And uh, that's all I know. If you want to browse by my shop, if you want to give a thumbs up, if you want to do exercise, thank you. And I will see you next Saturday. God willing, the creek don't rise. And I will try to keep you updated on going beyond keto with Casey because there is more to life than looking at keto channels and pictures which is ironic for me to say, I know, but there is more to life. <laughs> Thank you. I appreciate you. And I'll see you next time. Bye. I just want to reinforce the time that because